Got another set of questions for the A-level chemistry multiple choice practice playlist. So we're on to AS number eight. I hope you like the video. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, why don't you think about doing that? But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video, if you want to try them first. Nice easy one to start with. So the trend in boiling points down the halogens is explained by the increase in strength of the induced dipole-dipole interactions or London forces, you can see. So that was option B. Number two, straightforward empirical formula question. So we're given the carbon percentage. Obviously the hydrogen is just um, 100 minus 85.71 divide by the relative atomic masses that gives us the moles and you can probably see the ratio there without dividing by the smallest is one to two so it was option b number three percentage atom economy there's the formula there so it's the mr of the desired product so hydrogen in this case divided by the mr of all of the products or all of the reactants doesn't matter which way you do that multiplied by 100 gets it as a percentage the important thing to bear in mind here is we must include this balancing coefficient here. So there's the numbers in there and you see the answer is option C. Number four, so there's the electron configuration for the sulfur atom. There's the P configurations that we're interested in. So you can see there's a total of six orbitals occupied. So it's option C. Number five, we'll quickly work out the oxidation numbers for the sulfurs in all of these. So for A, it's plus six. For B, it's zero, because it's an element. For C, it's plus two. And for D, it's plus four. So you can see B is the answer. Number six, we've just got to work out what group this element's in. So we're looking for the first big jump up in ionization energy, and you can see that occurs between the third and the fourth. So this element's in group three, which means it's got to be aluminium oxide, so option C. Number seven, so number of particles equals the moles of particles times Avogadro's number. So the first thing we're going to do is work out how many moles of SiO2 we've got. So that's just mass over MR. So that's coming out at two moles of SiO2. As you can see in the formula, we've got um, for every mole of SiO2, we've got two moles of oxygen. So there's actually four moles of oxygen atoms. So multiply that by Avogadro's number and you get option C as your answer. Number eight, just need to be careful that we factor in all of the gaseous products. So one mole of magnesium nitrate decomposes to give two and a half moles of gas. So that means that many moles of magnesium nitrate will give that many moles of gas. And because the calculations at RTP, we just multiply by the molar gas volume to get the volume of that gas. And you can see I've multiplied by 24,000. So it gives me an answer in cubic centimetres, which is option D. Moving on to number nine. So you'll notice we've got enough information to calculate the moles of each of those reactants. So we're going to have to do that to establish the limiting reagent. So mass over MR gives us the moles of zinc. So 0.0015 and concentration times volume in decimeters cubed gives us the moles of silver nitrate. So if we think about the mole ratio in the equation now, if we want all of these moles of zinc to react, we're going to need twice as many moles of silver nitrate. So we're going to need 0.003. Well, we've definitely got enough of that. So all the zinc's going to react. It's the limiting reagent. So now we know that, we can see that that many moles of silver will form. So if we multiply that by the MR of silver, we'll get the mass. So it comes out as option C for the answer. Moving on to number 10, so the first thing we're going to do is work out how many moles of each cell we've got. Concentration times volume. So that comes out at 0 0.27 moles of HCl. So those moles are going to be in that 250 cm cubed diluted solution. So the concentration of that will be moles over the volume in decimeters cubed, 1.08, option D. Number 11, so you can see I've written up the equation that represents the standard enthalpy change of formation of water. So one mole of water formed from its elements in their standard states. So you can see that equation A is correct, but the value's half of what it should be. So A is wrong. 
Option B, the delta H is correct, but the equation's double what it should be, so that's wrong. Option C, it's totally wrong because bond enthalpies are endothermic processes, not exothermic, so they need a positive sign there, so that's wrong. So option D must be the right answer, and it is because this equation also represents a standard enthalpy change of combustion of hydrogen, one mole of hydrogen completely combusted under standard conditions. Number 12, continuing the theme of enthalpy change. So which statement is correct about energy changes? Combustion of an alkane is endothermic. Absolute nonsense. It's exothermic process. In an exothermic reaction, more energy is needed to break bonds and given out. No, that's the wrong way around. You get more energy out than you have to put in. So that's wrong. Option C, activation energy negative value. That's rubbish. It's got to be a positive value. So again, option D is the right answer. Just quickly explain why. So if you think about a substance in the gaseous state, you've got a lot of energy in there, lots of kinetic energy for the particles. If you condense that, you get a liquid, so they can't move anywhere near as much. So that energy's got to go somewhere. It goes out into the surroundings. Exothermic process, negative delta H. So D was the answer. Number 13, so a catalyst provides an alternative route for a reaction with lower activation energy. So the activation energy is indeed going to shift to the left. So option A was the answer. Number 14, so if we want to calculate the rate at 200 seconds, we draw a tangent to the curve at 200 seconds. And we calculate the change in Y and divide that by the change in X. So you can see the change in y is 0.1, the change in x is 350, and when you put that in your calculator, you get option B as your answer. Number 15, so we've got a couple of structural formulae that are a little bit more awkward to deal with. So the first thing I'll do is turn them into skeletal formula. So we're looking for the one that doesn't represent 3-methylbutene. Well, this one is, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, so there's butene there. 3-methyl. This is the same, just turn the other way around. 1, 2, 3, 4, double bond at the end, methyl on number 3. This is also 3-methylbutene, and so this must be the answer here. So it is butene, but it's 2-methylbutene, so D was the answer for that one. Number 16, how many structural isomers have got the molecular formula C4H9Cl? So I'll just do this in a systematic way, so chain of 4, Cl on the end, chain of four, Cl on the second. So we'll drop the chain to a th chain of three now. Put the chlorine on the end, put the methyl group on the second, and we also have that one there as well. So four was the answer, so option C. Number 17, so sodium bromide and sulfuric acid are reacted together to generate HBr for the reaction. There's the 3 methyl cyclohexanol, so the OH will substitute for the BR and we'll get option A as our answer. Number 18, so which of these could be the intermediate that would get us from the alkene to the diol? So if we think about the reactions that it would involve the intermediate doing, so this one, it would be alkane to alcohol. Well, no, that's not reaction. Uh, B, yep, yeah, well you can change a haloalkane into an alcohol, but we've got that alkane to alcohol again, so no. Um, same for C, so you've got alkane here, this is an alkane group to alcohol, no. So option D is the right answer, and yes it is, because you can go quite easily from a haloalkane to an alcohol, just by reacting it with um, some alkali, so D was the answer. Number 19, you can see I've already annotated the infrared spectrum. So we don't have any OH groups. So that rules out obviously B and D. We have got a C double bond O. So it rules out A. So C is the answer. And finally, number 20, which fragment ion would you expect in only one of these isomers? So M over Z29, well, both of them could produce that fragment there because they've both got um, an ethyl group, so that's not it. Moving on to B, so M over Z45, well, that is your 
45 fragment there and you can see that the 3 all can't make that fragment. So B was the answer. Just for revision, they can both make a 59. This is going to look very messy now. So if I cut that there, that would give you 59. CH3, CHOH, CH2. And this is also 59. CH3, CH2, CHOH. And the 73 comes from both of them losing um, a methyl fragment, losing 15. So they can both do that.